With Disney, you take the good with the bad. One thing though that you cannot deny is that they know how to release trailers. They know how to stuff references in these trailers. And a lot of characters have come back. Some old, some even new. One character though in particular that we have all been very fond of if you have watched the Star Wars Rebel series and even if you've read the comics, the Darth Vader 2017 comic series heavily features this character that was seen in the Obi-Wan trailer. And that, my friends, is the Grand Inquisitor. The trailer simply did not hold back. From its opening scene, we see that the Jedi are basically hopeless, while the Empire and the Grand Inquisitors are ruthless. In fact, immediately after Obi-Wan basically admits defeat, says that they have to admit that they lost, right afterwards, the next scene starts with the Duel of Fate soundtrack, where now we hear the complete opposite. Not the defeated Obi-Wan, but the successful and dominant Grand Inquisitor telling someone that the key to hunting Jedi is basically patience. After saying that, however, many fans were mostly disappointed by the newfound look of the Grand Grand Inquisitor. Basically, this is the first time the Grand Inquisitor has made it into live action. As it has been custom with a lot of these animated characters making it into live action, there has been some rumblings here and there that some Star Wars fans are not actually happy with the new look. I gotta say that it varies. I mean, Cad Bane's interpretation was very close to the real thing in some aspects. Ahsoka was handled very good too. This time, however, I have to agree with some fans that the Grand Inquisitor is missing a lot of key elements in live action and we're gonna discuss that as the video goes on but especially the conclusion will be something that you kind of have to look at and perhaps agree. If we're talking animated characters making into live action then I think the Grand Inquisitor will play the biggest role yet. Let's keep in mind that if we're talking Ahsoka she made a cameo in The Mandalorian. She wasn't a prominent character Character. Same with Cad Bane. He made a cameo during the last episodes and wasn't the particular main villain per se. The main villains were, were the Pike Syndicate. In the Obi-Wan series, however, it is definitely confirmed, even by the trailer, that the Grand Inquisitor will be the main villain of the series and the Grand Inquisitor's cohorts. Basically, the Inquisitorius as a whole will hunt down Jedi and perhaps even be fixated on Obi-Wan particularly. So let's talk about the physical appearance of the Grand Inquisitor. The first time we see him is in Star Wars Rebels, where that image is still ingrained in our minds. As a Pawan, his head in the animated version is very much close to what we see in Revenge of the Sith, the first live-action Powan at that in Tian Medan, who ironically talked to Obi-Wan. The first thing I'll do is compare these two. So this is a live-action Powan from Revenge of the Sith, and this is the Grand Inquisitor from the same species. His head is much more compressed and rounded. This doesn't go in line with either the Revenge of the Sith interpretation and the animated version of the Grand Inquisitor in Star Wars Rebels. Now you might say that Star Wars Rebels takes place after the Obi-Wan series. Well, if we're using the excuse of the Grand Inquisitor changed over time, got older and such, got thinner maybe, that's not really a good argument because the 2017 Darth Vader comic series takes place mere days, months, and eventually a year after Order 66. In that time span, in a couple of issues, we see the Grand Inquisitor inside the Jedi library even browsing the archives. And so this Grand Inquisitor from Star Wars Rebels and this in Grand Inquisitor many years ago in the Darth Vader comic series is very much alike. He is not stocky, he is not heavy, and his head shape is basically the same. So the aging excuse cannot really be used. If we start from the timeline of the comics, which is basically months after Order 66, to Star Wars Rebels when he actually died, he looks exactly the same. So Disney Disney went as far as to even recast the Grand Inquisitor role completely for the live action. They did the same thing with Ahsoka Tano. They did not recast the voice of Cad Bane, however. 
The same actor voiced Cad Bane in The Book of Boba Fett. So in Star Wars Rebels, the Grand Inquisitor was voiced by Jason Isaacs, who brought the character basically to life in a very sinister way. He was, after all, Lucius Malfoy in Harry Potter, so he brought that kind of evil into the Grand Inquisitor in Star Wars Rebels. The same speech patterns and actions can be heard in the Obi-Wan teaser too, so this at least suggests that the Grand Inquisitor as a character is still kind of the same. However, he will be played by a different actor and will have a different voice completely. The problem, of course, arises that, again, as I said previously, he looks very, very differently from how he looks in an animated form. Which, as I said, could give a new life to the character. It doesn't mean that the live-action version should same exact as the live-action one. But if you remember, in the beginning, I mentioned that there are key features missing from this live-action version. And the first things I want to mention immediately, right off the bat, is that the live-action version of the Grand Inquisitor does not have yellow eyes, and one of the most dreadful things, he does not seem to have sharp teeth. Now, Kylo Ren and Snoke did not have yellow eyes. However, that was sort of justified by saying that those were not Sith. Kylo Ren was not a Sith Lord, as was not Snoke. They were basically dark side force users. All right, I can get on board with that. Then you might say also that Count Dooku also did not have Sith eyes, as well as Palpatine when he was in his regular form. Interestingly enough, though, both these characters were Sith, during Republic times, during the Jedi reign. If you're saying that the Grand Inquisitor is concealing his yellow eyes, then again, it doesn't make sense, because why would the Grand Inquisitor hide his yellow eyes as we see them featured prominently in his animated version? He definitely has glowing yellow eyes. And of course, what can I say about the sharp teeth? The Pawan in In Revenge of the Sith can clearly be seen having sharp teeth. What's more tragic is that just mere months ago, we saw Cad Bane with the same sharp teeth. He was not animated or anything. Those were exact prosthetics. So Disney showed that it is possible to get that type of prosthetic. So why didn't they do the same for the Grand Inquisitor? As you can see, the evidence for the Grand Inquisitor looking very weird and not similar to his animated counterpart, the evidence, guys, is stacking up. He does not seem lengthy, he seems stocky, short, his head is very round, which is not the same as a live-action Pawan from Revenge of the Sith and from the actual Grand Inquisitor in animated form. He does not have yellow eyes like the animated version, and of course, lastly, the sharp teeth, which is, I think, the biggest sin out of them all. These are some key points why the fans are kind of outraged. So, I had a very interesting question in mind, and I want to ask you guys, please feel free to leave your comment down below. So, do you think that... Since the Obi-Wan series is months ahead, do you think that the Grand Inquisitor will get the Sonic the Hedgehog treatment? Where the fans were so outraged by the look of Sonic the Hedgehog that they actually went, went in and CG'd everything from scratch and made him look much, much better than the first version. I think in my mind it definitely could be a possibility, although it's probably not necessary and maybe hyperbolic, but as always, I'll let the fans decide. You guys tell me what you think? Should the Grand Inquisitor get the Sonic treatment or should they let the live action version stay this way as in the teaser? Thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you can have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the Force be with you. Until then.